when we close our eyes and focus on the breath, is to find a happiness inside that cannot be provided by things outside. It's important to realize that that's what renunciation means. When we listen to the word renunciation, it sounds like we're going to be deprived. We're going to lack this, lack that. And the question is, what are you going to have in, to replace the things you're renouncing? Well, the Buddha says you find a happiness inside that's much better. That can't be found when you're thirsting after sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations. As long as your mind is on that level, you find no real peace inside. Because you gain the things you want, even when you gain them, they don't last very long. It's like eating potato chips. You eat more and more and more, and they get less and less satisfying. But you keep on looking for them, because, as the Buddha said, for most of us we see that the only escape from pain is pleasure and sensuality. But he's offering us an alternative pleasure that requires that you close off your eyes, don't pay attention to things outside, and train the mind. It takes effort in the beginning, but as you get more and more used to the pleasure that can come from being with the breath, allowing the mind to settle down and find a sense of satisfaction right here, you realize it's a much better pleasure, and it puts you in a better position. As the Buddha said, this is a kind of pleasure that has no blame. It doesn't make you intoxicated, it doesn't require you to do anything to take anything away from anyone else. The mind becomes a lot more clear and a lot more open inside. Because when you're looking for happiness in ways that cause no harm, you can be more open about what's going on in the mind. You can see the ways the mind is harming itself, which otherwise you wouldn't be able or willing to listen to, able or willing to see. But now you're in a better position to see where the mind is causing itself suffering. And it doesn't have to. That's the whole point of the Buddhist message, is that we all lack skill in how we look for our happiness. And it's not that the search for happiness is a bad thing, it's just we do it in the wrong way. So he's offering us a better way to do it. But to do it, do it his way requires that we stop our fascination with sensual sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, and get fascinated with the mind as it settles down. Because you'll see a lot of how the mind processes its experience of the world. And you begin to see how it lies to itself and how it cuts corners. Now it exaggerates some things and minimizes others, which, which it shouldn't. Now you begin to realize that you can change the mind's habits, and you change the mind's habits. You don't have to change the world that much. Change the mind's habits, and you don't have to suffer, even when the world outside is an unpleasant place, a dangerous place, a place where things can get swept away as we chant. Still, the happiness we find inside doesn't get swept away. It does endure and offers us shelter. That means you have to put your mind in charge, looking after itself right here, right now. It requires work, it requires effort to train yourself to develop this skill. But the happiness that comes from skill is much more lasting, much more meaningful than the happiness that comes simply from pleasant tactile sensations or sights or sounds or whatever. Which is what the Buddha made this part of his path. He says, there's even better than this, but for the time being, look for your happiness here inside. And as you work at this skill and gain the benefits from developing this skill, you'll see that he was right. <laughs>